What's going on guys? So in this video I want to go over how I earned 1 million silver in an hour gathering in the yellow zone. I'd also like to answer some commonly asked questions and suggestions I received on my previous gathering videos as well. And timestamps will be in the description below. So let's get started here. So starting off I'm going to go over the spec and gathering bonuses the location, then the gear and the mount I use, why I gather in yellow zone versus red zone or black zone, faction flagging, and then I'll go into my strategy and walkthrough of the hour that I gathered this 1 million of profit. And then I will go into the results at the end and finally the future goals for this particular character in regards to gathering. Okay, so starting off here with the, the spec and gathering bonuses. So I'm around Martlock here and the, the primary resource is stone, second is ore, and third is gonna be wood cutting. I started with ore because I figured there'd be a little bit less competition and I started early 2023 so eight months in since i started this whole account so i am at tier eight for ore mining tier eight for quarrying and tier six for lumberjack now ideally i want to get this up to tier eight before i start specking up the the speed and the individual tier four tier five of the stone and the ore but Ideally, I mean, personally, I've been focusing on ore mining the most, which is why I'm at level 96, adept ore miner, 85, expert, and then quarrying is just recently I got to uh, tier 8. So I've been trying to get expert quarrier up so I can get granite more quickly, uh, more so going for the tomes. So that is the, those are the specs here uh, for my gathering bonus. As I mentioned, ore is my, my big one here. So tier five ore, tier four, I'm getting a 118% bonus with the Avalonian pickaxe, which gives me an extra 20%. While I'm mining, it shows up and it'll, it'll give me about 138% for tier four. And when I use pork pie, I'm using just like a cheap one, it'll give me another 15%. So the 15% on top of the 118 would be 133 plus the 20, 153. So I have like a 50% chance on every ore swing to get triple, which is pretty significant, especially when you're talking about exceptional and rare tier five, tier four ore. Because tier five is pretty, pretty close, about 112. So I'm near that 150 mark for the bonus. Now the granite or stone specifically, it's pretty low. I mean, it's 20% and then plus the the 15% from pork pie and 25 and 20% from the Avalonian stone hammer. You're looking at an extra 35% on top of that. And it's like, I have like 50, 50, almost 60% chance to get double granite. I'd like to get this up more. I don't have much in tier four because I don't really care about the resource. I really just mine it on occasion in hopes of getting a tome. That's the, uh, the spec and gathering bonuses. I also have an Avalonian ax. I mean, it doesn't, it helps a little bit, but I don't do too much wood cutting only if there's like highly enchanted, maybe rare or uh, exceptional node. So I'll try to get that up uh, spec wise as well. But my main focus right now is specking up the stone hammer. Now, again, this has taken me about eight months in total of learning points. And I also maxed uh, refining on this character. But being the reason I specced into these and the location we're going to be looking at today is Croker Hill, 14% enchanted rate and it gives you the rate of enchanted resources on the chart there below. It's easy because I kind of just go around in a circle and I kind of know the uh, the groupings of the ore and the stone. So I could check the big groupings to see if there's any uh, enchanted nodes. Now my gear and my mount. So I focus mainly on ore because that's that's the most profitable one. You're not going to get too much from the uh, the stone. Again, I go for the tomes more, more than anything. With my gear, you're looking at 17.5%, 17.5%, that's what, 35% bonus, and then another 35. So you're looking at 70% with the gear of my minor gear. And I don't really focus too much being that's the yellow zone, I mean, on the skills, because I mainly just use my Elder Claw and I am maxed. I'm at level 101 for Claws Combat Specialist and obviously uh, maxed out Dagger Fighter. I tried to get these specs up as much as I could just to get as much damage when I fight any any monsters like near the enchanted nodes or even like elite mobs I'll kill once in a while for my gear. Um, I use the Quarrier Backpack. I have a lot of space between my bag and my elite wild boar. I have 22, what is it, 20, 
2200 and then with the pork pie it gives me another 30 percent max load so i'm really at like 2800 so in in reality in an hour i'm not filling up my inventory so i could even use a uh a cape for more damage but this is just my current setup i just have the invisibility potion worst case i need to escape if people are uh because when i do faction flags sometimes i get attacked and i don't really have the equipment to actually fight elite wild boy I'd use because it's the actual carry weight it's not like an ox this one is actually on your character so if you get dismounted you're not going to get slowed and then this is pretty cool too the fearless rush it makes me go a little bit quicker so that's the spec the gathering bonuses the gear and number three is why do i gather in yellow zone versus red zone or black zone so personally the, the, the simple answer is it's just relaxing before i go to sleep i usually just do an hour of gathering just to do a mindless activity. I just feel like I always make progress when I do it too. I'm getting my spec up. I'm getting a decent profit. I could use all my gear of tier 8, which I would not be risking because this gear is worth almost 10 billion. So I'd not be going into red zone or black zone with this. So I wouldn't be getting as much of a bonus if I were to. Uh, I probably would be getting more profit because there's more enchanted nodes and less competition. But again, it's it's just relaxing knowing I'm making some progress and it's just an enjoyable activity for me. It's not for everyone. I know it can be boring, but uh, I just enjoy it. Decently profitable. And then um, one of my main goals is to see from the start what is really the max amount of silver you could get from gathering in a yellow zone. So up until this point, I, I never reached the 1 million mark in an hour in a yellow zone. I've been like maybe 700, 800,000 at the most. But uh I've been specking up and improving my strategy here and there, and I wanted to go over that in addition to the suggestions that you guys have have made. So the faction flagging has really helped me as well. It gives me probably an extra 100,000 at least from selling the, the hearts. You could turn in 3,000 of these tokens and you get a heart and they're usually 40,000 each. So this would be rock heart for, for Martlock. But realistically, wherever you are gathering, you're going to get like 40,000 plus for any of the other parts, which is the faction local resource. So over here, I'm faction flagged. Uh, if you go into the mists, it's going to disable your faction flag. I learned that halfway through a run recently. So make sure you keep that in mind. And uh, But it was a good suggestion from you guys. So I wanted to bring it up. Make sure you're faction flagged when you're gathering. It's an extra 100,000 100, or so for me, for my current spec, because I get three hearts, a little bit more maybe. And... So those are the four things here. I went over my spec, my, my gear, my mount, why gather, faction flagging. And now I'll just go into the actual gathering session and I'll talk about my strategy and how I got to the 1 million. All right. So now I'm just going to do a quick walkthrough of this session where I earned a million. And I started with a 5.8 million. And immediately I popped the pork pie to get the bonus and started looking for any kind of enchanted nodes for wood cutting, usually rare or exceptional, I look for, and the other ones uncommon and higher when you're talking about stone or ore. Now I also do kill these elementals because they will help increase my spec and they're much quicker. They're almost like enchanted nodes in a way because enchanted nodes and these enemies are faster to mine. So that's why I have like my tier eight claw so I can kill those guys quickly and then just mine them in addition to any like enchanted enemies. Now these are the key right here, the exceptional iron ore and if you find any exceptional titanium ore, tier 4, tier 5, because they're worth a ton more than uncommon or even, even rare. I mean, you're looking at, you'll see at the end of this video, probably a few hundred thousand of silver just from the exceptional alone. So once I find a location, I keep that in mind and I keep going back there every few minutes because each node has their own own timer. In addition, you can see I'm faction flagged and about a quarter of the way through my first pork pie, I am already at 1,250 faction, which is, I would say, around almost 20,000 of silver extra. Here we go again with the exceptional ore. And with my bonus, I can get like six or seven of these things each two charges of the iron ore node. And now you can see me too doing uh, granite and uncommon and even like tra uh, travertine just because I'm trying to get tomes. Now, I didn't get any tomes by the end of this, which is kind of rare for me. So I was surprised that I was able to reach the, the 1 million. 
Uh, but any kind of enchanted nodes, you, you, it's just worth it because it's fast. And this granite one alone was was even decent profit, seven thousand. But what I and I've been doing this location, Croker Hill, for a while now, so I kind of know around which where the main rock formations are with the ore and the the stone around the uh, the water as well. You'll get a few clusters, and there's always a chance for these to spawn as enchanted. And a quarter way through my whole run, uh, you, I, I could tell by the pork pie in the upper left hand corner. I'm halfway through the first pork pie, which is 15 minutes because each pork pie is, is 30 minutes. And it's a good way to gauge like how much profit I am compared to the full hour. Then all of a sudden I see this, uh, and again, granted is not too much profit in itself, but with my tier eight and what I'm almost at like 50 spec for uh, tier five stone gathering, um, there's a, a good good chance, and especially when it's uh, uncommon, it's fast to do, and there's a good chance you'll get a tome. Worst case, you have a good good floor of the decent amount of, of profit you get from the stone. Plus, I have the quarry or backpack, so I'm not worried about giving, getting over-encumbered by the weight. And I do pick up the occasional uh, item from, from enemies that might be six to 10,000. Sometimes those uh, tomes drop from the enemies, which are only like 20,000 silver, but still worth it. Uh, but compared to the actual gathering tomes, and I go back to the here, the, the exceptional ore. So I got five of them that time, which is which is pretty nice with my, my bonus. And you can see in the top left, I'm almost nearing the halfway point, but I found a decent amount of nodes, and usually the second half of my session, the next half hour, is usually the most profitable because I know generally where the enchanted nodes are before they they disappear, and I can go back to this like this cluster on the rock formation. I got lucky here with some a full rare iron ore node and a full uncommon one, which was which was pretty nice. And I continue to kill any of these mature rock elementals just for uh, fast gathering speed and upping my spec. Even like exceptional travertine, I mean, it's going to give me maybe a few thousand silver, which is not great, but the speed, it's its just, I'm like, why not? It takes like a few seconds to actually do it. And uh, I go back again to the same location. And at this point, I got the max uh, daily reward for my faction flag. And uh, I'm only about a quarter way through the second half, second uh, pork pie. So I'm already at 5,000, and by the end of this, I'll have about nine to 10,000 that I've earned from the from just being faction fled for gathering. I'm not even like killing any players or anything like that. So this is a good suggestion from you guys. And all the while, I've been filling up, and I I, I was using tier four journals, but at this point, it's you only get like a thousand or something silver per. So I didn't see if it was really worth it. So I, I do tier five, which they cost like four thousand, and you're you're selling it for like thirteen thousand. So you might get nine to ten thousand profit per tier five journal. And again, I go back to the exceptional ore, and this time I get seven of them. <laughs> and again, back to the uh, the river here, right to get that uh, rare iron ore. Now I'm, I'm at this point I'm about 75% of my uh, my run done, but I continue along and I, I found the key spots that had the exceptional iron ore, the rare iron ore. I did get on occasion some rare titanium ore, which was nice too. No exceptional tier five, but uh, it was nice going back to these ores and seeing they uh, didn't change back to normal, so they stayed enchanted for a good amount of time. And this is especially good when you first find the enchanted node and you know that it'll stay there longer. Especially if, you know, most people do uh, stone gathering here in Martlock, so there's not as much competition. And just as I say that, this guy is camping right by the exceptional iron ore. But I mean, I got a lot out of it, so I can't really complain about that. And I do kill these um, 
battle scarred berserkers if they're enchanted, just in case. I mean, they could always drop that that combat tome for 12,000, uh, 20,000 silver or so. And this was nice. I got the uh, Mature Rock Elemental exceptional. So it was super fast to actually kill him and then fast to gather. And with the exceptional granite alone, I got like 20,000 silver. And this was really slow. This is more just for like my spec, but I would do some enchanted lumber, even though I'm at tier six, so it is slow. I'm just trying to get my spec up so I could uh, eventually get to tier eight and have tier eight for all three of these or wood cutting and stone gathering. So here we go. We, we ended our session. We started with 5.81. We ended with 6.74. So I earned around 9,000 or so points for faction warfare because I had about 8,000 before. That's why I chose 17,000. But in an hour session, I could afford three rock hearts, which the estimated market value you can see here is like around 44,000. So around 120,000. Let's say conservatively, I can make 100,000 extra every hour just for being faction flagged. So pretty cool here. And here are the results. Um, we've got the more. 330,000 from Exceptional Iron Ore, which is a big one. We're at 60,000 each for the uh, the rare, uncommon, regular ore. Maybe 100,000 total from the stone. And Travertine, it's really worthless pretty much, but I just sell it anyway. Cedar Logs. A little bit, maybe a little less than than hundred thousand, uh, and then about a hundred something thousand for the uh, the rock hearts. But the bulk of it definitely comes from the ore because that's my main spec, and that's uh, most profitable in comparison to stone. And then I got three journals, which earned me about nine thousand each profit. So maybe another uh, thirty twenty seven thousand for the tier five journals, and. Overall, you could always uh, transport out to other locations that would need this. Uh, I believe I believe it's Thetford that has the uh, the ore bonus, but this is just like a relaxing activity for me. And I, after this, I just go to bed. I don't want to transport it all the way to uh, another location. So personally, I just sell it outright. If if this price is much different sell order versus buy order I'll go ahead and uh, put a sell order in but most of the time I'm just gonna do sell it right to a, a buy order and overall uh, my next goal is just getting my spec up and seeing if I could surpass that 1 million in the, uh, the yellow zone and uh, if you guys have any comments or suggestions for this let me know and I'll make another video on my other character which I'm doing skinning on so that's it for now and thank you for watching